They're all here. Ren Ren's army, the Blue Bubble Battalion, the Telasau Pep Squad, all the painted faces, all the crazy fans at the Nian shouting one big fight, the Lasallian shouting Animo Lasall, all the ingredients for a battle royale here in Game 2. Yes, and uh, this Game 2 is so important. It's a do or die for, for Ateneo. No Game 3 if Ateneo loses and Lasall goes on to win their fourth consecutive title. And uh, sixth overall uh, since joining the UAAP in 86. Well, of course, it's a different. There's a lot of drama going into this ball game, uh, Miko. This is uh, my first game. I think it's also your first Ateneo <laughs> LaSalle Championship. It is most historic, not only for the alumni, but also for the two of us, Miko. And we are part of the school's uh, really crazy, <laughs> wacky alumni who have come full force to support their beloved schools in today's game, too. Let's, uh, fa let's uh, look at what happened in the first game, which happened a week ago, by the way. Only best of three series, I know, which could last for three weeks. <laughs> okay, game one uh, numbers, partner. Well, it's a methodical uh, game hatched by LaSalle over Ateneo. No? The primer said that it was Ateneo in the first half, but look at the important numbers for LaSalle. Field goal shooting, three-point shooting. Surprisingly, the rebounds went the way of LaSalle, 53 to 34. Now, that's one big adjustment that Ateneo would have to do. And the turnover point slightly going on the side of De La Salle. It was the closest game uh, between La Salle and Ateneo this season. And of course, we expect it to be much closer in game number two. Of course, the pivotal time of that game came in the fourth quarter, where admittedly, of course, and even Ateneans would admit, uh, La Salle, of course, has the edge in the what, what many would call the fourth quarter composure. Well, really, the, the points are glaring in favor of La Salle. But uh, to be fair to Ateneo and uh, for La Salle, La Salle had how many championship experiences prior to this one? Right. Eight straight finals. For Ateneo, it was only their first after 13 years. So that's, there's really the tilt of the balance favoring La Salle in a close ball game, particularly in that fourth quarter, where La Salle was able to wrest the lead from Ateneo and was able to pull through in the clutches in the last minute of that fourth quarter. And perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps at the, the Ateneo can learn from their lessons in game one. And uh, one lesson, of course, is how to put the clamps on the three top guns of the Green Archers. You're talking about Renren Ren Ritualo, Mark Cardona, the Rookie of the Year, and Mike Cortez. Well, obviously, these three guys are the offensive core of De La Salle. If they don't score in the regular double digits, La Salle will be in trouble. Look, Cardona, seven, double-double, the best player chosen by Danny Francisco in game number one. Mike Cortez, he took over in the second half, was able to contain and go beyond the foul situation that befuddled him in the first period. But Renan Ritualo, that crucial basket in the fourth quarter, again, Renan Ritualo, the value that he brings to La Salle, the number of games that he has won for La Salle this year is just incredible. Of course, uh, the other role players for La Salle stepped up in uh, Game 1, namely Carlos Sharma, whose name is in the middle of a, a minor controversy. And of course, uh, Manny Ramos also uh, is in the middle of a controversial virus. Uh, Ramos, of course, uh, not playing 100% today, but he really gave 100% back in Game 1. Uh, Sharma, of course, is suspended for today. We'll get to that later. And then Manny Ramos scoring 8.6 in the fourth quarter. Sharma also 6 in the fourth quarter. Of course, the most telling is that asterisk at the bottom. We're in when the points came, and that's in the fourth quarter. 12 of the 16, these two players really stepped up big and came up big in both points and rebounds in game number one. We will be discussing the suspension of Carlos Sharma for... Uh, Apparently, punches uh, delivered uh, back in game one against uh, that player, uh, Rich Alvarez. Now, to shed more light on this matter, we'll be joined by tournament director Chad Reyes of the Asian Basketball Academy, and he will be issuing a statement to clear the air, shed light on the suspension of De La Salle big man uh, Carlos Sharma. Chad, are you ready? <laughs> okay, good afternoon, Chad. Chad, of course, is no stranger to this kind of uh, basketball atmosphere. Now, Chad. For the benefit of all those who uh, were wondering what happened, why Carlos Sharma was suspended, and, and if it's going to be a one-game suspension or otherwise, uh, please deliver your statement for the benefit of the thousands of UAAP fans. Well, it, it's very simple, really. Uh, uh, Carlos Sharma was uh, caught on videotape uh, uh, throwing a punch uh, at uh, Rich Alvarez. And uh, the UAP board has been very... The UAP as a policy has always had that, as we see it here, uh, whereby, uh, well, this is, this is just uh, one of the incidents. After this, there is an offensive foul, uh, an offensive rebound situation where uh, Carlos Sharma on the way down uh, from, from uh, after the basket uh, gave uh, uh, a clearer 
you know, with the ABA, we have three angles. And uh, in, in, a, in a separate angle, we have a clearer uh, version of, of the punch that uh, actually happened. But uh, uh, the UAP board has been very consistent with it. Uh, two years ago, Ronald Magtulis, even without the benefit of video tape replay, uh, was seen by a UAP board member throwing a punch, and he was suspended. And last year, the same thing with Enrico Villanueva. So they, uh, they, we, uh, the UAP board was just being very consistent in applying the same kind of uh, sanction, in imposing the same kind of sanction. Okay, so as we promised, uh, Trot will be issuing a statement, and he has issued a statement. And hopefully, uh, for everyone, that should uh, le uh, put the issue to rest. Uh, thanks again, Trot, for uh, dropping by and coming over. Hard work ahead for this ball game. game yes, two. Uh, it's going to be very exciting, and we're looking forward to it. Okay, thank you very much, Trot. Uh, moving on to prepare you for this ball game, missing in action, of course, as we have continually explained. Carlos Sharma suspended for punching Rich Alvarez uh, back in uh, game one. Averaging seven points per game and uh, 4.5 rebounds per game, but really his contribution in game one in particular will be missed. Oh, yes, and particularly budding up against Rico Villanueva and his value you know, was be sorely missed by LaSalle. You know, they have to find uh, Gavino would have to play extended minutes in place of uh, rookie Carlos Sharma for LaSalle. Magnum Membrere on your screen, so hopefully for Athenians, he, he hopes to bounce back from uh, that forgettable game one performance. Okay, Alvarez Tenorio Villanueva. Enrico scoring 14 points, Tenorio with 16, Alvarez and 17, but uh, apparently it wasn't enough. Yes, well, it made it easier for the defense of LaSalle to figure out who's going to get the ball. These three players combining for 28 of the 32 points in the second half, that's just too much, Nico, for, for a team who's looking to grab their first championship after 13 years. Now, there's got to be more support for Alvarez, Tenorio and Villanueva, offensively speaking. And, uh, oh, partner. Okay, I, I, I think the drama is beginning to unfold as I think some emotional fans or something's happening behind the Ateneo bench. Uh, in the meantime, let's check on some Eagles who really need to pick up their scoring for game two. We're talking about the veterans, Rainier Season, uh, of course, Paul Tanchi, both players playing in their last year for the Ateneo along with uh, Magnum Membrere, Paolo Bugia, and Larry Fonescher. These players for Ateneo, they need to step up. Well, when these players scored in the first half, look at Season and Membrere. Only four points for the two of them in the second half. But while they scored their six points in the first half, Ateneo was in good shape. They led by seven at the half. And so you know that if the numbers would come in for Bugia, Tanchi, and Fonacher, and Season and at the right time, Ateneo will be ahead of LaSalle in this ballgame. Okay, I understand Makati has closed down because... Uh, all the bosses are here. <laughs> Game two, Ateneo versus LaSalle. The Green Archers, they lead the series one game to none, and they can finish the series with a win today. Yeah, partner, and uh, not just Makati, the parking area is closed here around the Kubao area. Of course, Ateneo's battle cry is they believe. They believe in their Blue Eagles. They believe that the Eagles can bounce back today despite having registered no wins to LaSalle in this year so far. Well, hoping that the low of average might catch up on LaSalle on the most important ball game for Ateneo. They cannot afford to lose this game. Uh, there wouldn't be a game three if Ateneo would lose today. Of course, the controversy this week was that LaSalle team was down with a viral uh, flu and it's still soft because we don't know if it's really, you know, it would really have any effect. The, the rumor is some Athenian spread the virus <laughs> over in Lasal. Is I don't know if that's true. Well, they they caught it in Greece, so they uh, <laughs> had the practice and attended mass. But actually, I was in the uh, practice of Lasal last Monday, and I saw Rendon really not feeling very well. But we don't know if it would have any effect. The question is, can they put on the press given their condition? If it's really true that you know they were down with the flu, and uh, particularly for Ramos and uh, Santa Maria, who need to be hospitalized, I think they were the last people to get out of Manila Sanitarium because of that flu. Villanueva and the Blue Eagles hoping to win today and live to fight another UAAP game. So the Athenians uh, have been introduced. And that's their controversial Mercurial head coach, Jolipa. Jolipa, the last uh, round UAAP crowd in 1986 when he coached the UP Maroons. Now he's looking at his second round. And he has to do it in two games. Nico, and it has to start in this ball game, in game number two, because Ateneo is down 0-1 to De La Salle. 
And I'm, I'm scanning the big dome, and based on my poor math, I do suspect that there are more uh, LaSalle students and alumni and fans inside the big dome compared to Athenians. I, I really have no idea. I think the, the house is divided properly, except that uh, well, probably on one end, because they also paid for the beach section. That gave you the impression that we're more than Athenians. Right, right. <laughs> I don't see your bleachers really being uh, filled to the rafter. But because that was dead to us, I think, no, for, for La Salle. Uh, the bleacher, I even bought the bleacher tickets. I want to... Uh, yeah, I saw you were selling earlier outside. <laughs> you were selling bleacher tickets for 500 pesos. Shame on you. <laughs> oh, BJ Manalo oh. is in the house. Let's see if he can play. Almost in our pre-game. He's missing in action. He met a freak accident last week, could not play, but he was hospitalized. Oh, yes. He joined the practice yesterday, but I don't know if Rato Maru will decide to put BJ Manalo in his first ever championship here in the UAP against Ateneo. Here's Manny Ramos. Uh, he was confined along with this big man, Agone Santa Maria. Two gentle giants who succumbed to that uh, mysterious virus and the cool cat, Mike Ortez. He's all set to go. And of course, the controversial rookie. Mark Mac Mac Cardona. I do not need to introduce this young man. <laughs> He's well known. This could be his last game. If Lasalle wins today, this is his last UAAP game. And I think Redden Nicolo is going to be all courage then. Franz Momar and Jolipa, the two head coaches. France, of course. He already has three UAAP titles tucked under his belt. Jolipa looking for a second crown as a coach in the UAP, looking for his first coaching for the Ateneo. Just look at this crowd, Miko. Look at this crowd. And uh, there's much more outside and outside of Metro Manila also wishing to get into Araneta Coliseum. Shame on you. You were selling bleachers <laughs> tickets to high school students for 500 pesos. Miko, don't, don't, don't make it so loud. <laughs> <laughs> we're a business school. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I believe it was Coach Fran from Arena who said this was a scalper's holiday. Oh, yes. Even in game number one, uh, where everybody wanting to get a seat inside the oh, yes. Coliseum, and even I think there were some uh, people asking, just, just get into their bags, into your uh, wallets, you know, <laughs> get us through, you know, because we can't get the ticket. You know, we might be sitting in the other corner, but it doesn't matter. Some people are just here, standing up, no seat. Well, of course, they wanted to see. This was a long time, no? 1988 was a long time, Nico. You were what in uh, high school? At the I was time? in high school at I the was time. In high school. That was my second year in teaching for De La Salle. So it's been a long time, partner. <laughs> Been a long time. Of course, uh, for both uh, La Salle and Athenians, uh, they could still recall that 1988 showdown with such precocious detail. Yes, and uh, you know I love it so much when the Danny Francisco and company troop back to the Araneta Coliseum and face Rafa Dinglasan and uh, Gia Badilla and the guys who played for La Salle. Of course, Ateneo champions in 1988. This is it, partner. Of course, I find it hard to remember anything about Rafa Tinglas. <laughs> <laughs> Getting, of course. Uh, Good afternoon to you, Rafa. I'm, I'm sure Rafa's <laughs> around here somewhere. I saw him back in game one. Well, we can still kid around. But of course, this is going to be all well business partner. This is going to be very important. I don't think any team here would really hold their punches. Okay. We've already talked, people have talked about the virus. And how will it affect De La Salle's play today? Well. The, I checked out the virus thing this uh, afternoon after uh, coming up from Cebu. You know, it could be a case of uh, dehydration at the worst possible scenario for LaSalle, but several questions. The physical stamina of LaSalle, if indeed they were able to recover. It normally it would take about a week to recover, but here it's just days. And uh, it could be courage here. They've not had a very good practice in this week. They've had practice yesterday, and that could tell on the LaSalle. So Ateneo, they, I don't think they'd be looking at the virus issue. They'll be here all business, virus or without the virus, they're going to play LaSalle, and their vision here is to win this ball game against the Archers. It is no mystery that the coaching staff of Ateneo uh, had their questions about the officiating mm -hmm. back in the uh, game one. I wonder if this, that has to do anything <laughs> with the powwow that's delaying the start of this ball game. Oh, by the sheer uh, body movements, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to interpret, Nico, what's, what's going on. I, ca I can't read lips either. <laughs> uh, well, Joe's at the, uh, his back turned on us and uh, really can eavesdrop on what he's going on. Certainly they're trying to iron out and make it really uh, clear. Well, it has been quite an interesting season as you look at Carlos Sharma suspended for today for uh, a punch on Ateneo's uh, Rich Alvarez. You know, this is a telling 
difference. Could be the telling difference. They might miss game. his white body. So much, because against Nico Villanueva, he's the only last ally who can bang Villanueva toe-to-toe -to -toe inside the shaded area. And he's played good games against Atene. He was named best player in the second game in the elimination. That's correct. And he had 10 points in the last game in That's game number correct. one. So, you know, it's a big factor. It's really a big factor. And LaSalle cannot deny this uh, situation for them without Sharma. I think things are more than even on the side of Ateneo. Okay, the starting lineups, Ateneo, Tanchi, Membrere, Villanueva, Alvarez, and Cruz. Tanchi with the ball, Ateneo first chance to score. La Salas, Ritualo, Cortez, Ramos, Santa Maria, and Cardona. Here we go, Rich Alvarez looking for Paul Tanchi. Tanchi on the right side against Cortez. Shoves away Cortez, Alvarez goes inside to Enrico Villanueva. At well, that time, the empty pass got into Enrico Villanueva. Easy basket for the first two points of this ball game. For the benefit of our viewers, Villanueva actually led the league in statistics. However, he was suspended for one game, and once again, he is prevented from winning the MVP award. The second straight year. Here's Cortez, fall away. Oh, he's starting early, shooting over Paul Tanchi. And the ball game is tied at two. We're nearly a minute old here in the first quarter. Rich Alvarez surveying the area over the right side against Santa Maria. Of course, big question mark as to whether Santa Maria and Ramos will play 100% today. Will they still feel the effects of the virus? Here's Alvarez. Alvarez left open. Yes! Good shooting here. The two big guys for Ateneo. Four points for the Blue Eagles. So the big two for Ateneo scoring, owning the four points of the Blue Eagles. Here's Ramos inside, and he will miss. And here's Alvarez on the run. He has Villanueva on his right. Villanueva slows things down, and Tanchi will organize. Here's Andrew Cruz, short stab, no. A bit offline, Villanueva with the rebound, no putback. He fakes, he fakes, one more try, no, but there's a whistle. Are there two offensive boards for Ateneo? The foul is on Ramos, first on Ramos, as we go to George Rocha with his uh, Chantex update. Yes, good afternoon, guys. Well, even if none of, none of the guys were absent of practice yet, yesterday two of the green archers will not be able to play 100% in this ballgame. Big guys, Manny Ramos and Adonis Santa Maria checked out of the hospital only this morning. Although they were at practice yesterday, they only stayed for a while and spent the last the hospital. A few others did show some symptoms of that virus going around a few days ago, but today everyone else except for Ramos and Santa Maria, even BJ Manalo are A-OK -okay to finish this final series today. Nico and Randy, back to you. Of course, uh, thanks George. The South can't wait to see BJ Manalo back on the court. BJ, of course, missed game one, but uh, no problem for LaSalle. They still won the game. Oh, well, that's just crucial in the report of George. How much uh, gas in the tank of Ramos and Santa Maria to finish this game against uh, Ateneo? And you wonder if we will see the likes of Vaino, Gozum, and Gavino early in this ballgame. That could, that could be the situation for Lasal. Alvarez, I think, picks up his first foul on that... Uh, oh, no, it's Andrew Cruz picking up his first foul. And the first team foul for Ateneo. So both teams with the team foul to show. BJ. See if he will be filling in. Maybe I don't know if Kabato will also play. I've talked to him along the other elevator the other day, and uh, he might be looking forward to playing. Here's Cardona over to Cortez, being guarded closely by Tanchi. Less than eight minutes to go in the first, and Adonis Santa Maria will miss that time. And partner so far, two missed shots by Ramos and Adonis Santa Maria from point blank range. And as Arvarez slows things down, let's go to Patti Laurel with this Ateneo Gentex update. Yes, thanks guys here at the Ateneo bench. Despite the news that LaSalle players are sick right now, Ateneo is still sticking to the plan. They understand that LaSalle is a strong team, but right now they don't want to be intimidated. They don't want to panic. They want to keep things simple. And they also want to work on those rebounds because that was their problem in the last game. Right now, they don't want to worry about the outcome, but as long as they fight the good fight. So that's it from that Daniel Bench. Back to you, Nico and Randy. And we check this move by Mark Cardona, and there's the foul by Magno Membrere, his first. Patty mentioned the word rebounds, and in the rebounding department, LaSalle really dominated, leading at the nail 53 to 34. And the offensive board is 80 to 9. And early on, I think we see Ateneo making the adjustments, really working on the uh, rebound. Oh, that's going to be team foul number three against Ateneo. 
it's the kind of a mess match at the low post where in Cruz would be switching on to Manny Ramos, number two on Andrew. Again, we have to keep in mind that LaSalle might still be feeling the effects of the virus. Of course, Santa Maria Ramos confirmed that they were confined. The other players also feeling the effects as reported in the newspapers. At this point, I don't think it will be that obvious yet, Miko. But come the second half or the second quarter, we will see. LaSalle is not taking on the press. The game they would like here is quite methodical. <laughs> Ren Ren, hey, Ren Ren, I know you're good. But, but that's, <laughs> that's too much, Martin. <laughs> well, it's right also, I wouldn't be surprised if that went in. <laughs> Franz Pomarin has had the number of Ateneo this year, winning in the first round and the second round rather convincingly. And, of course, that big win in game one. Here's Indico Villanueva going all the way. Time they gambled, Manny Ramos gambled on that steal. And, oh, it's 8-2. This is the biggest lead. La Salle reduced to a field goal in the last three minutes of this uh, first quarter. By the way, Paulo Bugia is in the game. Replacing Andrew Cruz. Cortez missing from the right side of the glass. And they're pushing underneath. Spice, Membrere is befuddled. Not knowing why he was called for the foul. He was... Okay, okay, we're checking. Okay, so it was on Adonis Santa Maria. You're right in your uh, first suspicion, Miko, that the 16 actually referred to Santa Maria. So the ball will go back to Ateneo. That was number one on Santa Maria, number two on De La Salle. Six and 42 to go in the first. Uh, Ateneo leading eight to two. Alvarez over to Villanueva. Villanueva fakes and he won't score. He travels. Saw the opportunity, but took steps. Lucky break there for Lasal. Lasal could not buy a basket here in the first minute, except for that made by uh, Mike Cortez. Wallace has not had a good handle of the ball, nor a good look at the basket. By the way, the Athenians still sporting that retro uniform, uh, fairly similar to the ones uh, worn by the 88 champion team. Here's Ritualo. Ritualo slips a bit. He drives to the basket. Didn't she do? No. But he gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. And it would be on Alvarez or Bugia. It's on Paulo Bugia. Well, I think also it's the same for La Salle. This uniform of La Salle, if, uh, it's the Grand Slam uniform. It's, yes, it's the 89 uniform worn by then uh, Limpot and Candel and company. So going back to the 80s for the uniforms of Ateneo and La Salle. Oh, Ritualo missing his first free throw. Very unlikely Very for soft. the clutch performer. As you look at Jolipa. Jolipa, of course, another controversial and really emotionally draining year for the mentor of the Ateneo. As Ritualo gets a split from the back. 83 is the count today on top by five points. Six and 12 remaining here in the first period. Here's that La Salle press. Tanchi flips a pass over to Alvarez. Membrere now holds the ball. Trying to go to Tanchi. Ten on the shot clock. Six minutes to go in quarter number one of game two. Tanchi, nowhere to go, goes to Alvarez. Alvarez inside to Paolo Bugia. They look into that mismatch when Cruz was replaced. So Bugia posting on Mark Cardona, stretching the lead of Ateneo to seven. As we mentioned, Bugia and company, they're talking about Fonacer, Sison, Tanchi. They need to step up if Ateneo wishes to continue this series. Here's Cardona. Expect the hook. No, he passes at the last minute to Ramos. And Ramos was fouled. Uh, La Salle is attacking the defense of uh, Ateneo, working that ball inside the shaded area. Paulo Bugia, number two, and that's team foul number five against Ateneo. La Salle only has two team fouls here in the first quarter. There's the move by Ramos, met by three Blue Eagles, and Ramos will troop to the line. Well, let's see, out of the hospital this morning, how much gas for Manny Ramos. He played big in game number one, had 13 rebounds. Well, he's kind of breathing heavy in his mouth, uh, Vigo. I see Mike Gavino early in the rotation of uh, Coach Franz Fumarin. You know, everything is not A-OK -okay for some of the big men of La Salle. Ramos was the top rebounder for La Salle with 13 rebounds in Game 1. And he gets 2 for 2 from the line. And Ramos, as we suspected, will get the early rest. And in comes the rookie from La Salle Green Hills, Mike Govino. I think he's going to be given some oxygen. Uh, La Salle's got a tank of oxygen into this ballgame. 
Here's Villanueva against the rookie. Oh, Rick Walla with a steal. Nice tap there by Ren Ren. Goes to his front court. Moves inside. Zig sagging through. Oh, oh. You know, that's a difficult shot, Miko. That's a difficult shot. He was angled up and he was like sitting on a chair with his familiar De Quattro move. And really, he caught the Athenians wide eyed in wonder with that move. Here's Tanchi. Swings over to Magnum. Magnum inside to Villanueva. Villanueva will test the defense of the rookie. There's the drop step, and he was pushed by Gavino. A lot of learning to be made by Gavino in this game. I think he'll have extended minutes playing against Villanueva. Number one. Yeah, he's just trying to push out uh, Villanueva. Or that's a steal, rather. Oh, that was a, the steal earlier brought to you by Smart Z, the power to live the life you choose. Smart Z, your cell phone. Now we have this timeout. We'll be back, Ateneo, on top by three. Both Ateneo and Lasalle are creating a tremendous traffic jam outside. Of course, the Athenians, the battle cry for Ateneo is that they believe that they believe that this team, despite losing three games to Lasalle this year, can still come back and extend the series to a game three. But that man, Renren Ritualo, he wants to end his De La Salle career, his De La Salle stint with a bang. Yes, and uh, he wants it today. He wants it today. And, uh... <laughs> Talk about fashion. Uh, oh, there's the, uh, no, there's uh, Bob Ongbelis, of course. Both played for La Salle uh, and, and Ateneo. Ateneo. But the green shirt will tell you <laughs> his heart belongs to La Salle. Bugia, outside to L.A. Tenero, Tenorio, part of the all-rookie team. And he scores his first basket on his first try on the afternoon. Uh, that's the impact of L.A. Tenero, Ateneo. He comes up with the big numbers. He's given them a good look offensively for Ateneo this year. And it's a five-point advantage for the young men in blue and white. Here's Ritualo, guarded by Alvarez. Ritualo goes inside. And the ball will sail out safely for Ateneo. Well, Ateneo immediately went to that Alvarez uh, defensive uh, position against Ritualo. In game number one, it came in the second half. They're trying to pull out from that. But now, early on, is Alvarez taking the Ritualo, trying to take away that shot. That the cool cat sticking too close to uh, Tenorio. That's number one on Cortes. And that's the 14th foul of the Green Archers. One away from the penalty. Ateneo already in the penalty. BJ Manalo. Lasalle fans eagerly awaiting his uh, stint on the court. Cabrera inside to Bugia. Bugia with that high advantage over Cardona, but he misses the turnaround. Cardona, another rebound for him. Well, here's Cortez from the right side calling the play. Cardona on the left, guarded by Membrere. 11 on the shot clock. And Ritualo trying to shake off Alvarez. He forces the three, and it's partially blocked. Here's Tenorio. Shake and bake, no go. Membrere! That will bounce out. The long rebound goes to Cardona. Cardona will be fouled by Tenorio. That's a beauty foul as Cardona spiriting away with the momentum. First foul of Eri Tenorio. That's going to be a free throw. A free throw for uh, Mark Cardona. Atene is in the penalty. And here comes BJ Manalo. Nico. It's a combination of uh, cheers and boos. Of course, BJ gave Atene one junior uh, championship. Right. You know what BJ gave Ateneo? BJ gave Ateneo a glimpse of the future, uh -huh. which did not happen. Yes, a hope for the future. Right, and right. they moved to La Salle. And I had several Atenean students from the high school and said, you know, when BJ plays for us, he's going to be our messiah. But that never happened Nico. <laughs> never happened. So, you know, but BJ, this is his first championship against Ateneo. In the eliminations, he was the best three-point shooter right. in a 44% clip. Our score is 12 to 9. Still a three-point lead for Ateneo. Rainier season slips and that's traveling. That's one marquee matchup we'll be looking at, people. Rainier and BJ. They'll be going up against each other for the rest of this ball game. And this will be an emotional game for Rainier. You have to yes. keep in mind, Rainier and Paul Tanchi are playing in their last year for the Ateneo. Another foul given up by Tenorio, that's number two. That would be two more free throws for La Salle. So Ateneo racking up the fouls here in the first quarter. And although they're on top by three, the Archers can quickly come back with their visits to the line. Look, Ebo Kimbo coming in to the ball game to replace Tenorio, who 
got two early fouls here in the first period, couldn't really risk him. So cool cat Cortez. Uh, a lot of talk as well for Cortez, whether or not he will be joining the PBA draft uh, next, next year, or whether he'll stay and perhaps lead La Salle uh, maybe to another championship uh, campaign. Well, that will know uh, come January. If he files the application, then you won't see Cortez for La Salle next season. And he misses his free throw here, Stanchi. So both graduating players for the Ateneo on the floor at the same time, Tanchi and Siso. Tanchi driving baseline, he forces it up, and Gavino gets the loose ball. Cortez zigzagging through, trying to get rid of Siso. He goes to BJ Manalo, who misses. And the ball goes to Santa Maria, and they call the job. He's tense. I think BJ is tense, so he can easily make that shot. His first attempt in the ball game. I would imagine this time last week, BJ was confined, was uh -huh. in the hospital bed, trying to cheer for uh -huh. the Green Archers while he was watching on TV. So helpless, but this time he can do something about it. And Tanchi with the last touch. 2 and 59 remaining here in the first period. Just a two-point lead for the Blue Eagles. You know, Coach Jolipas introducing a lot of players in his rotation early here in the first quarter. He might be looking at the buffer zone. Is Bugia hurt? Or I think something. Uh, so there's a red under his eye. Right. Uh, you know, he might have to check out of the game. Maybe it was a finger. Of, uh, uh -huh. I don't know. Wayward uh, forearm. We don't know. Oh, oh it's, it's bleeding. bleeding, partner. What is bleeding? Paolo Bugia's left eye is bleeding. Well, I think in the last play when he was uh, locked in a battle for that leather with uh, Adonis Santa Maria. So we will have to stop the action here as a PT personnel will attend to Paolo Bugia. I think they will replace Bugia for now. Almido comes in for uh, Ateneo. Is Villanueva checking back in for uh, Ateneo? Okay, Ateneo has five, no, four players on the court. Uh -huh. And that is him checking in. That's the eye of uh, Paolo. I would suspect there's a, a gash, a cut, uh -huh. on, on, on perhaps that, that, uh, that left eyelid. Uh -huh. Let's see what happened. So Bugia here will jump. There, oh, there's there. the elbow of Santa Maria. Santa that, Maria. That. I, I, I don't suspect that that was intentional. Prince Alvarez for Paolo Bugia. So it's Alvarez who will replace Bugia's spot on the floor. There's Bugia, and he's being attended to. I think I'm right. There is a, ca a uh, cut, a, uh -huh. gas, a cash on the left eyelid of Paolo Bugia. So in the meantime, with 2 minutes and 53 seconds to go, De La Salle is down by 2. And Cardona ties the game. Yes. Look at 1-1 against Rainier season. There was no help that came. And now here's Tanchi. Ateneo has no numbers, so they will have to wait. So it's Chris Epo Kimpo. Handing the basketball for Ateneo. Over to Season. Season fires. He won't get the box. Rebound here by Cortez. Cortez again quickly scanning the floor. Cardona wants to give the the lead. He goes to Willie Wilson and he will miss. And Kimpo gets the steal. Kimpo on the run. Trying to go all the way. And it will go out. It will stay with Ateneo. Baseline inbounds here for Ateneo. Tanchi over to Villanueva and out to Kimpo. As we approach the two-minute mark of the first quarter. Ball game is tied at 12. And Season goes for three. And this is way, way short. Maybe not a good shot to take for a Rangers either. Although he, you know, he slices to take those shots. Less than two minutes remaining. You know, this is an odd combination. I'm looking at Ateneo. Villanueva was joined by Elmido, Kimpo, Tanchi, and the Rangers. season. I think the first time this season that I've seen this combination for the Blue Eagles. And it's it's really a small lineup when you think about it. Oh. As Kimpo using his speed, stealing the ball from Manalo. And here's Tanchi, who takes the long one. No. And again, Cardona with another rebound. That's five rebounds now for Captain Hook. Last time he's got a double-double, 10 rebounds to go with his 16 points. 
I think Marty O is now in the game for Lasat. Joining Cardona, Wilson, Manalo, and Gavino. As Kiko falls down, Manalo in a tight situation, and Rainier completes the steal. He goes for the three. Oh, yes. You know, that's a big one. He did it from the backward, got the steal and the big three. Ateneo is a three point lead. Exactly one minute to go in the first quarter. Back to a two point advantage for Ateneo. Here's Wilson, Mr. Quality minutes over to Cardona. Cardona goes inside and he gets it locked and he travels. That's right, there was a stop made by Tanji when he tried to cross the sandwich. So here's the steal by Kimpo, brought to you by Smart Z. Power to live the life you choose. Smart Z, your cell phone now. Back to live action. Larry Fonacher is now in the game. Second year man for Ateneo. Over to Kimpo. 41 seconds to go in the first. Now the Tanji on the right. Ciso. Feels he's hot. Well, you better do a better job than that. You know, he's giving Ranger season the look at the basket. You don't do that to Season. The lead is stretch to five for the Eagles. Five straight points for Season. Manalo now setting up the offense with 21 seconds to go in the first. BJ against Kimpo. Manalo goes to Yo. Yo, the rookie. Turn around. No. Kimpo with a rebound. And he falls down and he is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. That's a 15 foul against Lasal. So what a holdover here for uh, this lineup. Kimpo holding his own against BJ Manalo at the low post. Now he's got two free throws for himself. Are you at all surprised that Joe Lipa is using players like Elmido and Kimpo here in game two? Well, in a series, Rico, you have to put out some cards that is unseen and not part of the scouting report of the opponent. No? and hoping that, you know, we come up uh, strong and keep us so far. The quality minutes that he has provided. L.A. Tenorio, he scored two points when he came in. But Kimbo was able to do some stops against B.J., had the steal, and now we have a chance to score for Ateneo to extend his five-point lead. First attempt, too strong for Chris Kimbo. Also coming from the Ateneo High School. He has one more... Uh, playing here for Ateneo as he makes the second free throw. So he has given Ateneo a six-point lead. Lasalle going for the last basket here in the first. And it, it's with Ren Ren. No! So we end the first quarter with Ateneo on top by six. 18 to 12. Can the Anthony and survive or will Lasalle wrap it up today? We'll bring you the second quarter when we return. We have about, I think about 20 to 22,000 inside the Coliseum. Are you talking that balloon? <laughs> now he's referring to a thousand other balloons, partner. Miko Halili here with my partner, Professor Rani Sakdalan. To bring you now the second quarter of Game 2 between Ateneo and Lasalle. Uh, quick whistle there. That was foul. That was quick. Just a few seconds off. Number one on Rich Alvarez. As we were only 12 seconds uh, into the second quarter of this ballgame. So Vigo was an atrocious 27% shooting of Lasalle as compared to 47 of Adenay that gave him this six-point lead. Another foul given up here by uh, Ateneo that's number two. Okay, let's go to Patti Laurel with his Ateneo Gen Next update. Thanks guys for all you Paolo Bugia fans, he's fine, he just had a cut in his eyelid and he's hoping that he'll be able to get back on the game. However, back to the Ateneo bench, Coach Lipa told the guys to provide a lot of help, especially when they double and rain your season. It's important also that you keep that ball rotating and do quick rebounds. Back to you, Miko and Randy. Thank you very much, uh, Patty. As Manny Ramos, a victim of the mysterious virus, missing the free throw. We were also checking with the Ateneo chemistry department if some Ateneo <laughs> student. <laughs> well, in the grade school, I heard from Bob Novales that 20 in the class of his uh, son well, that's true. were afflicted by the same virus. Right. So 20 out of 40 students. Membrere to Fonacher. Fonacher testing the defense of Manalo. Ball goes out. Last touch on De La Salle. Well, That could have been a shot for Larry Fonacher, but uh, I think he's trying to regain that confidence in it didn't make any uh, points in the uh, game number one, so I think also Larry Punasher would have to step up here and score some numbers for Ateneo. 
It's season Alvarez Membrere Villanueva and Fonacher for the Athenians. Ramos, Ritualo, Cortez, Wilson, and Manalo for Lasal as Villanueva. Oh, that one's short. And Cortez grabs the rebound. Bounce pass to the running Manny Ramos. Oh, yes. Out of the hospital, into the court, and a layup. And Ramos says, I do not care about the virus. I will play and help my team maybe win its fourth straight title today. Ciso for three. <laughs> oh, number two for Rainer season. Eight points. He's in good shape. Actually, six-point lead for Ateneo. Cortez. They want to set up Manalo against Rainier Season. Manalo may have the advantage there. Ramos goes to Ritualo. Ritualo fakes. Ritualo fires. Difficult fall away. Short. Ramos with the offensive rebound. Outside to Cortez. And Cortez says, we have 20 seconds to work with on the shot clock. Let's organize. So here's Cortez over to Wilson against Fonacher. And Wilson over to Manny Ramos. Villanueva with the rebound. Fonacher. Can't go all the way to Season. Season fakes. He can't fire. Over to Fonacher. Fonacher. He shoots and no go. Well, he was open. Ooh, that's oh, that's a foul, foul on Mem Membrere. That's a foul on Membrere. That's going to be number three in terms of team fouls. And number two for Magnum. And BJ Manalo sits down. And Santa Maria replaces his spot. On the hard court, 8.06 to go in the first half. De La Salle working on a six-point deficit. Here's the pick. Santa Maria, here's Rituallo, fires! That's a three-pointer for Renren. And that will cut down Ateneo's lead to three. Membrere won't answer back. Over to Alvarez on the right flag, yes! Let's go to George Roth huh, with this De La Salle Gen Tech stopping. Thank you so much, Miko. In the early minutes of the first quarter, you could not feel the intensity coming from the Green Archers, and that is the main reason why they ended the quarter with only 12 points, six points behind the Ateneo Blue Eagles. So Coach France, in that last timeout, said that there, uh, there was a huge lack of pressure in the part of the Green Archers on the Blue Eagles. So for this quarter, he told them that they, they cannot relax. The Green Archers have to be on their toes at all times. Miko and Randy, back to you. Thank you very much, George Cortez. Called for traveling that time. Uh, he was trapped with the ball in his hands and nowhere to go. Seven and 17 to go in the first half. De La Salle down by five. So they're looking for a season right now who has the hot hand. But that time it's short. Battle for the loose ball. That fierce battle won by La Salle. Here's the cool cat. Zigzagging through ball. Fake Ritualo open. No! And Membrere grabs that rebound. Monacher on the attack. Met by Wilson at the three-point line. Monacher can't drive to the basket. Over to Alvarez. This season's MVP. Oh, that's too strong. And Wilson gets the long rebound. And Wilson... Bounce pass, Adon is Santa Maria. So the big men running for Nasal here in the second period. Ateneo with a three point lead still with 6 and 24 remaining in the second quarter. Membrere against a fellow former San Pedro Red Cup de Tualo. Fonacher swings it over to Season. Season. Oh, Season is hot uh, here in the first half. They're not paying attention really to Rainier Season. He's getting a good look at the basket. Ten markers for Rainier Season to lead all scorers. So back to a five-point advantage for Ateneo. As De La Salle, as methodical as they are, no surprise, they're slowing things down. They look for Renren on the left corner. And he won't get the bounce that time. Could not get it off the glass. Here's Season over to Fonacher. Fonacher over to Magnum for an open three. Oh, this is trouble for LaSalle. Ateneo's hitting the shots from the outside. They're all here. Oh, yes. They're all here. Everybody. Who's who in basketball and maybe in business. Right. Ritualo. Yes, turn around. A beauty for Ritualo. He has eight points in the game. Well, he's taken the shots here in the second quarter. LaSalle is still down by six points. 5 and 17 to go in the first half. Alvarez inside to Alve oh, Villanueva, rather. And here's Membrere. That attempt is short. Alvarez with a rebound. Oh, Bugia is back in the game. Oh, good fake. 
He threw off Santa Maria, got the two points, restoring an eight-point lead for the Blue Eagles. And Manny Pangilinan likes the effort of Gugia that time. Wilson over to Gavino. Gavino now to Ritual. Another steal by Alvarez. Alvarez all the way! And this is the biggest lead for Ateneo. Ten points up. Again, the question mark for Lasal: Do they have the stamina yes. to keep in step with Ateneo today? There is no question about their experience and composure. That is a given. Here's Membrere. Bugio with a cut. No basket that time, but he was pushed as he falls down. I think the speed of tempo will go on the side of Ateneo. They push that ball. That's going to keep Lasal really breathing heavy. Gavino's replaced, B.J. Manalo comes back for LaSalle. And uh, you'll expect those cat calls coming from the <laughs> Ateneans. As Paolo Bugia, first free throw is short. Bugia so far, four points today. Our gallant statistician, Boya Bellera, who used to play for the Manila Central University Tigers in the old UAAP, uh, he pointed out something very interesting. In game one, Tenorio Alvarez Villanueva really carried the scoring load, but here in game two, Season has scored, Bugia has scored. And we will be discussing that point more as we enter this time out and we'll be back. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's take this opportunity to greet the thousands of Ateneans and Lasallians uh -huh. watching on TV in the schools. Uh -huh. uh, I'll, I'll greet the Ateneans. Good afternoon, Ateneo. Yes, and good afternoon, Lasallians. <laughs> A turnaround there by Mark Cardona. He has six points today. Here's Membrere. Oh, nowhere to go. Ball saved over to Cruz. Four minutes to go in the first half. De La Salle down in the second quarter. Cruz won't take the three. Over to Bugia. There's the cut by Cruz. There's the cut by Membrere. But the ball goes to Villanueva, who jumps without the basketball steal here by BJ. Manalo on the run. He stops. He looks for a teammate. He goes to Cortez. Cortez won't fire. Cortez goes to Manalo. Yes! Oh! Lead as a whistle, partner. And that just excited the LaSalle crowd more. That brings down Ateneo's lead to six. And here's a steal by the LaSalleans. And oh! Wilson will score in the layup plus a foul from Bugia. Oh, boy. So a switch of momentum from the timeout. A big three by BJ, a run through in the fast break from a turnover. Here it is, Miko. Look at this. Cortez will find Wilson, sixth man awardee this season. Got the foul from Bugia. The lead is four. Wilson has been part of all three championship teams, and he does not complete the three point play. Bugia, who is now carrying three personal fouls, gets the rebound. Panacher on the right side, drives to the basket, handoff, Andrew Cruz. Oh, good shot, partner. Good shot for Andrew Cruz. Get a good measure, good distance. Back to a six-point lead, 35-29 for Ateneo. Cardona. Oh, in traffic, and he travels. Well, that's a, one tendency that Cardona has to check. He'd, he'd like to get through sandwich situations, second traveling on Makmak. You know, Kimpo comes back for Ateneo because he played splendidly back BJ. in the first quarter. So we have a 30-second timeout and we will hang on. The score is 35-29 with uh, less than three minutes uh, remaining. And Ateneo calls the timeout. Maybe we can listen in. Okay, we are back. That 30-second timeout by Ateneo just finished. 2 and 56 to go. Again, just to set the table, no Carlos Sharma. He was suspended for punching Rich Alvarez, so he's suspended for this ball game. Yes, and uh, right now, I think Lasalle is not yet feeling that uh, in the ball game. But you know, you have to like the string of uh, momentum shifting from one end to the other. One in favor of Ateneo, and the last time in favor of Lasalle. 
a shaky pass there by Pugia. Kimpo baseline, throws it up. And uh, Cardona there with another rebound. He has six rebounds today. BJ Manalo picking up speed. Pass to Wilson. No, Santa Maria for the follow-up. Oh, another run here by Lasal, keeping the pressure on the Blue Eagles. Four-point lead though for the Blue Eagles. And Membrere attacks. No foul call that time. Ateneo on top by just four. And oh, DJ oh. Manalo makes it a two-point ball game. Well, he realized he's got a mismatch over Epo Kimpo. Shoots over his head, and the lead is down to two for the Eagles. And here's that Nassau press creating nightmares for many an Atenean. Kimpo over to Membrere. Less than two minutes to go in the first half. Archers banging on the door, down by just two. Four on the shot clock. Fall away by Bugia, short. Andrew Cruz with the offensive rebound, and he gets clipped on the arm. That's against uh, Willie Wilson, but LaSalle is far from the penalty. LaSalle leads the series one game tonight. They can finish it today. Well, you mentioned you know, during the time of that Elite in is being saved by coach Jolly Pan. He was put into the ball game, got two fouls immediately, but you know, we expect that LA would be in in the third period very early. A lot of scores for Ateneo. This is a big difference in terms of the point distribution compared to game one for the Blue Eagles. Rainier season with a great first half here for Ateneo. Over to Tan Chi. Tan Chi nowhere to go. Out to season and out to Andrew Cruz. In and out. But Villanueva slaps that ball away for the offensive rebound. And a new shot clock for Ateneo. Bogia. Whoops. Almost lost the ball, almost lost it again. Villanueva from 50. Oh, that's a bailout shot there. Vico, his eight point, first two points here in the second quarter, and the lead of Ateneo is four. With a minute and 10 to go. Cardona in motion, receives the pass from Cortez. Cardona drives, he was swallowed by the defense. Manalo gets the loose ball, and he oh, scores oh. An, un an unbelievable reverse. You know, I thought it was a tight situation. But seven points for BJ off the bench for De La Salle. Remember, BJ missed game one because of a whiplash uh, accident, but he's back. Archers down by two. Villanueva offensive foul. Good D by Santa Maria. Held on. First foul against Rico. 36.9 seconds remaining. Chance for La Salle to tie. As Santa Maria just went flying away. So Archers going for the tie. Maybe even the lead with a three-pointer. They have Manalo, Wilson, Cortez, uh, Cardona, and Santa Maria on the floor. Here's Cortez on the left side. 11 on the shot. La Cardona will fake. Cardona high looper. No! And the rebound goes to Tanchi. Tanchi quickly to Andrew Cruz. And Cruz going all the way. Oh. He was fouled. He was fouled. That was just a big play for Andrew Cruz. Cortez was waiting for the swipe. Second foul on the cool cap. You know, Cruz numbers and play here. Heads up ball. You know, we mentioned earlier, partner, as we check out that foul by Cortez. Remember, at the top of this game, we mentioned that despite the big numbers from Villanueva, Tenorio, and Alvarez, it wasn't enough. And now, you have the shock troopers like Kimpo, and Cruz and Season uh, providing uh, some scoring shock for Jolipa. And that's good here for the first half because that would add the buffer. Tenorio has only scored two points. He's going to go to his average in the second half. And Cruz uh, is really playing heads of ball for Antideo this afternoon. So 13.6 point tick, uh, point ticks uh, remaining on the first half as Cruz goes two for two from the line. Four points today. Four-point lead for Ateneo with time running out here in the second half, second quarter rather. Only six seconds to go, and BJ Manalo has the basketball against Tanchi. Two seconds to go, one second to go. Basket won't count, traveling on Manalo. Well, he tried to escape the double team at the top of the key, negating that basket from BJ. So it looks like uh, Ateneo will have the lead at the end of the second quarter. Hail Mary pass stolen by Cardona. And that will end the first half of play between the blue and white, the Ateneo Blue Eagles, and the De La Salle Green Archers.
of course, we'd like to greet the thousands of both Athenians, Lasallians, and basketball Football fans fan. who are tuned in here on Studio 23. A really, really blessed night to everyone. We hope you're enjoying the action so far. All those Athenians and Lasallians who are stuck in school. <laughs> They're probably or... watching it on television. <laughs> right. <laughs> Coach Jolipa, of course, uh, he has said, and he, ha he has been quoted uh, not once, that this may be his last uh, season as head coach of uh, the Ateneo. And he might stay on to continue the program that he started uh, back in 1999. Well, of course, he doesn't want to end the season tonight. Right. He wants another game next Thursday. And Ateneo will be working extra hard to prevent what happens in game number one and in the elimination rounds, uh, first and second game, where LaSalle was down in the first half, but to finish the game, smiling over their Athenian counterparts. Again, LaSalle, of course, uh, already legendary for their fourth quarter composure. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing how, how this De La Salle team, despite the number of rookies in the lineup, how they have played like veterans for coach Franz Kumar. Well, what Danny would say at the uh, game pace right. for the De La Salle It never Archer. changes. So we start the second half with LaSalle holding the basketball and down by four points. Uh, the Green Archers start the third with Cortez, Santa Maria, Ramos, Ritualo, and Cardona. Here's Cardona, and it's all in the wrist, partner. Yeah. It's all in the wrist. So he should be a very good dark player for uh, Mark Cardona. Absolutely. So that's eight points. Eight points for Cardona. Still a two-point lead for Ateneo as L.A. Tenorio misses from three-point land. Rico Villanueva fakes and he scores from down low. Good recovery there for the Blue Eagles. So back to a four-point lead for uh, Ateneo. By the way, the Blue Eagles starting the second half with Tanchi, Tenorio, Membrere, Villanueva and the MVP, Rich Alvarez. Cortez goes to Ritualo. Ritualo was chosen MVP by the UAP press corps, is short on the three-point attempt. And Cortez uh, asking that... It was partially deflected yes. by Rich Alvarez, so it should go LaSalle's way, but right. the looked it the other way. The ball goes to the Ateneo, and here's Membrere stumbling a bit. He stops, goes to Tanchi. Tanchi stops. And the jump shot won't work. Alvarez trying to save the ball. It's with Villanueva, and he gets hacked. And again, Villanueva getting a loose ball. Opportunity for Ateneo to score inside. Number two on Ramos. Let's see what happened there. Alvarez will try and save the ball. And the loose ball goes to Villanueva. A little slow-footed there was Manny Ramos' partner. I felt, you know, he should have, you know, grabbed that ball and not waited for it to come to his hands. Villanueva did a better thing by going to the ball, and he got the foul of Manny Ramos, two free throws for Rico. That was the first team foul on the Green Archers here in the third. So Villanueva misses his first free throw. He has 10 points. And six rebounds so far. Well, in the first half, Ateneo made 75% of its free throws, six of eight. LaSalle, seven out of 11 for a 64% clip. So, uh, 11 points now for uh, Villanueva. Back to a five point advantage for Ateneo. Cortez, as always, looking for Ritualo. They will go to Cardona on the right side. Cardona goes to the middle and it frees up Cortez. And that's a missed three as Cardona steps on the line. Not really a good play there, but Cortez had the, uh, the look at the basket. So as early as now, with over eight minutes to go, De La Salle already employing the press here in the second half. Oh, that's an oh, offensive foul. foul. That's an offensive foul. That's number three on L.A. Tenorio. That's number three, you know, has not had a good stay on the floor, has not taken too many shots. It's a two offensive foul, partner. He has two points so far. Two points, okay. And he scored that back in the first quarter, which is ancient history. Now here's Cardona. Blocked by Villanueva. He still gets the ball. Oh. And that is the secret 
Marco Cardona's game. Well, partner, that's his character. You, know, you may block him once, but uh, he's going to get the ball back. He scored two points. So a three-point lead for Ateneo as Membrere gets bludgeoned while driving to the basket. Well, he was able to beat Requalo when uh, Villanueva got the ball and then scooted through. Look at this. This was the foul on Membrere, foul on Santa Maria, number three on Adonis. The free throws for Membrere. Ateneo is really waiting for Membrere to explode. He got one three-point shot earlier in the first half. They really need the points and go on his first uh, free throw. Membrere scored eight points back in game one. And he gets a split from the line. The situation very much the same as we started the second half. Four point lead for Ateneo, not being a serious death being launched by Lasal. Santa Maria top of the key. Hands it over to Ren Ren. And last touch on Ramos. Well, Tanchi and Tenorio pressing on Manny Ramos. Of course, his uh, stamina suspect in this ballgame. There's that Nassau press uh, creating havoc in Ateneo's offense. And here's Tenorio, bounce pass, Villanueva, no go, and he gets a rest. Another one, so Villanueva attacking. Number three on Manny Ramos. And Lasal would have to make an issue on the, on the pass to uh, Villanueva. He's getting the, the passes. Arm contact that time. So third foul on Manny Ramos. So both. Santa Maria and Ramos with three personal fouls. So Santa Maria sits down and Willie Wilson checks in the ball game. Maybe at this point on the missing guard of Sharma for De La Salle. Right, again, Sharma suspended for game two for punching Rich Alvarez back in game one. Altanchi playing in his final year with the Blue Eagles. And Villanueva, also a question mark. He has one more playing year, but uh, nobody knows if he will enter the PBA draft next year. So Starla Sharma. It's a six-point lead for Ateneo. Ramos, top of the key. Goes to Cortez on the right side, guarded by Tenorio. And here's Retualo. And that's all he needs. That's all the opening Ren Ren needs. You know, if you're just a little late in fighting on the screen, you'll get the number, and the lead is down to three for the Blue Eagles. 11 points for Ren Ren, two three-pointers for Mr. Clutch. 7-0-1 to go in the third. Archer's down by three. Alvarez with a strong move. Yeah. Tough matchup for Willie Wilson. He gave the baseline to Richie Alvarez. Back to a five-point lead. Cardona passes to the wrong man. Here's Tenorio on the run. L.A. foul. Wallace has to give him the shot. Two free throws for Tenorio. So far, no serious death of the lead of the Blue Eagles of Miko. It's been uh, coming in far in between. Ren Ren and L.A. are having a conversation. <laughs> it's a conversation between former Red Cups. <laughs> I don't know if they're roaring to each other. <laughs> I'm sure they're not sweet talks. <laughs> foul given by Ren Ren, not really but very friendly on the last play of the Norio. You go back to game one and you, of course, uh, you remember that foul by Ren Ren on, on a driving L.A. Uh, towards the end of the ball game. Of course, uh, Nicuala and, and Tenorio are fierce competitors. Yes. So you expect nothing less. Ateneo gets another chance at the basket here. Paul favoring the Blue Eagles. They have a six-point lead, six and 39 remaining in the third. Again, a win by LaSalle will wrap it all up. And will allow the archers to celebrate from their fourth straight championship. A win by Ateneo will extend the series to a third and deciding game. Traveling there by Villanueva. For the time there was a double team, Galino and Wilson. Sticking to that uh, Villanueva play. A chance for LaSalle to cut the six-point Ateneo lead. Cortez with a drive, and he does that so well. It is such a beautiful thing to watch. He just glides. Oh, the steal there by Ren Ren. He stops. 4-3. No. Villanueva with the rebound, quickly to Tenorio. Anthony ends up by four, Tenorio no look past Membrere. Oh, too strong! Uh, Loose ball foul on. Who's going to be? Uh, Alvarez, Alvarez. 
Alvarez. And, and Alvarez, and you know, Alvarez quickly admits to the foul, and that's number two on Rich. Three foul situation, four for LaSalle, two for Ateneo. Bugia comes back to the place Rico Villanueva. You know, that three-pointer could have really made the LaSalle crowd go bananas. Uh -huh. So here we go, LaSalle down by four. They have yet to taste the lead today. Cortez, top of the key. Expect a drive. As Tenorio falls oh, down, and that's an offensive foul. The time Tenorio got the number of Cortez. Cortez lowered his shoulder. Number three on Mike Cortez. There it is. Look at the shoulder partner. There's the lowering of the shoulder to the abdomen of uh, L.A. Tenorio. So how many partners with the with three partners? Cortez, Santa Maria, and Ramos. Three personal fouls for this. De La Salle Green Archers. And we have five minutes and 43 to go here in the third. Tanchi setting up the offense. He's been doing that for the last five years. And Alvarez gets uh, hammered. The body up foul there by Gavino. You know that's going to be the piece of the ball. Gavino has realized they're in the penalty. Alvarez will shoot two free throws. 5 and 34. This is a long time. This could be a long quarter, particularly for De La Salle. That a wise enough, Ateneo should be coming in very strong, going to the hole because Lasalle is in the penalty while they only have all the team fouls. Too much expectation for Mike Camino, but Maria, despite his condition, would come in. So Santa Maria nursing three personal fouls and perhaps maybe effects of uh, the sickness, the flu virus that uh, he and Manny Ramos uh, uh, were hit by. You know, the uh, suspension of Sharma has only made things more difficult. But the rotation is taken out uh, from its usual uh, cycle. The lead of Ateneo is back to six. Ten points now for Rich Alvarez. Five and a half remaining in the third. Cortez goes to Santa Maria. They're looking for Eduardo. Santa Maria fires, oh. and he really has that sweet shot. Yes, and uh, what a time for it to come. The lead is down to four. As Tenorio crosses the half-court line, over to Membrere, and now to Alvarez on the right side. Right corner, there's the cut by Tanchi. Alvarez making a move, he spins, he still has the ball, and he throws up, and there's a whistle. Oh! There's a foul called against De La Salle. Maybe we should take a look at that. We should take a second look. La Salle fans claiming there was traveling. Let's see. Oh, the movement's still there. Well, they were looking for, uh, you know, uh, just a non-call. Uh, close to say that, you know, there was traveling. I think he planted his foot well enough. That's a fortunate thing to happen for the Blue Eagles. They could have easily lost that ball. If right. a non-call was uh, occurred, but here's Alvarez. But he mopped his feet, though. <laughs> Something that, you know... Po poetic justice, perhaps, for La Salle? Probably. <laughs> Villanueva on the bench. Uh, 13 points, uh, 7 rebounds so far. As Alvarez misses both, Katanji with a big offensive rebound. So with 5 minutes to go, Athenians enjoying his lead. Membrere strong move, and the follow-up won't work. Bugia jumps up, and there's oh. a foul. There's a foul. And LaSalle wondering how the referee got that foul from behind. And the ball was stripped. What? Okay, let's watch. So there's a move by Membrere. The follow-up by Alvarez won't work. Bugia will get the offensive rebound. And then uh, there's the swipe. There's a foul. We'll bring you more action between Ateneo and La Salle. Eagles up 50-46. So Wilson, who has been transformed to a very decent uh, ball-carrying guard, goes to Ritualo. Seven on the shot clock. Ritualo makes a move against Alvarez. Four at the shot clock. Over to Wilson. Two on the shot clock. One on the shot clock. And it will expire. And the ball stayed too long on Ritualo. Trying to execute. There was no pick for Ritualo to be able to make that move on the top of the key. From Miko Halili here with Professor Randy Sakdala. Along with George Rocha and Patti Laurel. When you gain two of the UAAP Finals. Nassau leads the series one game to none. It's, it's a best of three affair. A Nassau win today will give them their fourth straight championship and sixth overall in the UAAP.
for Ateneo, a win today will extend the series to a third and deciding game next Thursday. And then the way the things are moving, partner, look at the free throws. Bad for Ateneo, Lasalle, but Lasalle is not taking a free throw here in the second half. Those are the same numbers that we noticed in the first half. Oh! Nice pass there, Villanueva over to Alvarez. Alvarez now with 12 points and 5 rebounds. Let's go to George Rocha. Thank you so much, Pico. Well, in that last break, I could hear a few sniffs and coughs here and there and some nose-blowing action too. But Coach Franz Beck, his voice not to quit on him now. What he was trying to do was trying to, he was trying to bring the fire out of the Green Archer. So he told them we have to stay focused and under control, especially at this point in the ballgame. Miko and Randy, back to you. Again, are, are we seeing signs now of maybe fatigue or effects of, of that virus? Well, they cannot, They were not able to sustain the momentum they got in the third here in this quarter. And uh, I don't think that's going to be an excuse for LaSalle for playing uh, not so explosive here in the third. Well, not certainly not an excuse for Manny, Manny Ramos with that one-hander. He has seven points in the ballgame. It's kept LaSalle in the ballgame. Just a three-point lead for the Eagles. Villanueva, oh, it's dangerous pass. Loose ball recovered by Tenorio. No look pass to Villanueva. He can get the bounce and Alvarez will be hacked on the arm. But there's too many fouls given by LaSalle here in the third period that, that has negated their efforts to come to Ateneo and rest the lead. 19 fouls committed by LaSalle. Look at this. They were looking and anticipating that the shot will be made, but nobody jumping from LaSalle, nobody boxing out Rich Alvarez. Look at the, listen to the cheer of the Blue Eagles, Nico. Certainly a good game here for Rich Alvarez. Saving the best game for Rich Alvarez. Not oh. from the free throw line. <laughs> Mr. Free throw. Big smile on the face of Rich Alvarez, who received his uh, second straight MVP award before this ball game. That is the battle cry from Loyola Heights, and that is they believe. They believe that there will be a game three as Alvarez gets a split. On the other side of the fence, the people from Taft are shouting for work because they want their fourth straight championship and they want it at the expense of the Athenians. Oh, it's Nick through Cardona. So Ateneo playing its cards very well here in the third quarter. All they have to do is to finish strong here and you know, LaSalle could be befuddled <laughs> going into the fourth period. That is, of course, the million dollar question. Will Ateneo finish strong? Of course, the rest of the Eagles behind us we are counting on that. 56-52, four-point lead for the men in white. Tenorio is, has nowhere to go, and he travels. He travels. Look, he should have passed earlier. Ritualo sits it down, and this is going to be some buffer for Coach Franz Umaren. He sits down Ritualo with a minute and 20. Psychologically, he'll get there and physically, he'll go back to the fourth period. Four-point lead for Ateneo. By the way, both Ramos and Santa Maria are nursing three fouls. Less than two minutes to go in the third. Green Archers down by four. Oh, Take that oh, too. You know, Cardona, how many points has he got? 12 points and eight rebounds. Another solid game, and that's a solid steal by Wilson. Manalo goes to Wilson. Wilson baseline. He goes to the oh. basket. Hey, it's a tight ball game, Miko. It's our fourth deadlock of the game. And the Cruz Membrete quickly to Villanueva. Villanueva, he doesn't want to settle down. And that's a hurried shot yes. from the big man of Ateneo. And this is where LaSalle's championship composure begins to come in. That's going to be a foul on Andrew Cruz. And looking for the first phase of the lead are the Archers. Third foul on Andrew Cruz. You know, you were right in pointing at Rico did not settle. Went immediately for the shot. He babied it. And, uh, it. This is the opportune time. 41 seconds. The strong finish is going the south way here in the third. Season replaces Membrere. Looks pushed out. Mando Membrere. So, Willie Wilson, in his hands, by the go ahead free throws for De La Salle. With all Ateneo. 41 seconds remaining. Now, the first time for LaSalle to taste that lead. And how sweet it is for Willie Wilson, our sixth man awardee. And Wilson has seen it all for LaSalle, has been part of all three championship teams. And he gives the Green Archers a one point lead with a miss on the second. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all the excited people. <laughs>
So the score is 57-56. Oh. And season overshoots. Well, the five shots. He was scored from the bench. No rebounder. Just gave the ball back to De La Salle. And Manalo. Slowing things down. Here's Antonio Santo Manel. Oh, that was blocked. That was blocked. 15 seconds oh. to go in the third. And the Athenians throw it away. As Tenorio falls down, what's the call? It's going to be the Sal. The ref is looking at each other. Ateneo asked for an offensive foul on Manalo. So La Sal could go for the, at least to maintain his lead going to the fourth period. So no foul call. Mm -hmm. It's last touch on Ateneo. There's the collision. Last touch on Tenorio. So sideline inbounds. Wilson will start to play. The Green Archers are now on top, 57-56. Cardona, he will fire. Hook shot. Yeah! And what a way to end the third quarter. The three-time defending champions, stricken by the virus and all, are showing heart. And they lead the game by three, 59-56, the fourth quarter. So here it is, the reckoning. Yes, partner. A lot of questions placed against Ateneo with respect to its character. Now it must show its character here in the court to come back and rest the lead from De La Salle. If they lose today, there's no more game three and La Salle will go home victory of victors in the fourth championship. So Ateneo starts the fourth and final quarter with Fonacher, Tenorio, Alvarez, Villanueva, and Tanchi. Fonacher saves the ball to... Oh, he's, well, he was caught stepping on the baseline. Well, some numbers in the fourth period. Ateneo dominated La Salle at the rebounding end, 14 to 5. But in terms of field goal shooting, La Salle 65%, only 31 for Ateneo. And that was the difference in the third. Remember in game one, the fourth quarter story, La Salle outscoring Ateneo 25 to 16. As Cantona, nothing but net for Captain Hook. Six and markers for Mark Cardona. And the Green Archers have opened up a five-point bubble. Tanchi goes to Tenorio. He won't take the three. Tanchi, they swing it over to Fonacher on the right side. Ten on the shot clock. Fonacher goes to Villanueva. And now Villanueva working on Ramos, who is nursing three fouls. Villanueva lost the ball. Manalo to Ramos. And goes back to the point guard wisely. Brendan Rituallo! Yes! This is an onslaught legal launch by La Salle to start the fourth period. The biggest lead, eight points for the defending champions. And they have caught Ateneo by surprise. Tanchi trying to settle down the troops. Eagles now down by eight. Tanchi goes to Fonacher. Wow. He was called dead. Cardona will be charged with the foul there. Number three on uh, Renan Ritualo. Gives that steal. Brought him a smart set. The power to live the life he choose. Smart set, your cell phone now. You can hear the LaSalle crowd. They can sense that they have control of this game as Villanueva attacks. Oh, and he gets fouled. But it's on the BJ Manalo who got Rico's head. Two free throws for Villanueva. But in the last, in game number one, La Salle dominated Ateneo in the fourth, 25 to 16. Only three players accounting for the numbers of uh, Ateneo. Here they're looking for Rico Villanueva and Rico. They need some numbers outside of Rico, Rich Alvarez, and Eli Tenorio to spread the defense of La Salle. And remember, in that fourth quarter in game one, Ateneo shot a paltry 35% from the field and had nothing from the three-point land. And they committed six turnovers to one of La Salle. As Villanueva goes two for two, he has 15 points and seven rebounds today. And this is the momentum. What was that? An infraction at the inbound play. Uh, it's going to be a lost possession for the Green Archers. The season's in and out of the ball game for the Blue Eagles here in the second half. He shot the lights out in the second period. He has to come, come in and recover that uh, touch here in the fourth for Ateneo. Green Archers up by six. 
Tenorio. The scoring has been almost non-existent today as he goes all the way, crisscrossing to the basket. <laughs> he just said it was missing, and here he comes. So it's a four-point lead. Ateneo sizing some momentum here in the fourth. Seven and 46 to go in game two. Wilson escapes from Seesaw, and he gets blocked by Villanueva, and there's a loose ball foul. If it's on Ramos, that's number four. Oh, yes, that's right. It's on Ramos, number four on him. LaSalle unable to execute. Ateneo putting the defensive stop when it needed. Let's go to George Rocha on the De La Salle bench. Thank you so much, Rico. Well, in that last break, the whole DLSU team was just on fire. It wasn't just coach fans talking in the huddle, but all of the green archers were just encouraging each other, saying that there's only one more quarter left, one more quarter to win this ball game. So coach fans there was just asking his guys to stay focused, be patient, and shower the Ateneo Blue Eagles with the pressure that they have been working on for the past years. Guys, back to you. That's character partner now with the play by... Uh... Rainer Season. Season uh, finding Villanueva, Tenorio finding the ball, and he gets fouled and almost made the basket. Oh, yes. So Ateneo has shown it can come back from an eight point deficit. Second foul on BJ Manalo. Number four on La Salle here in the fourth. There's that veteran assist. Season to Villanueva brought to you by Smart Z, the power to live the life you choose. Smart Z, your cell phone now. And Tenorio with a chance to tie the game. Let's go to Patty Laurel on the Ateneo side. Thanks, guys. At the start of the fourth quarter, you can see that LaSalle is heavily pressuring Ateneo, not only on the court, but also on the stands with all the fans shouting. But Ateneo is fighting back right now. They want to end this fight with dignity. They want to make sure that they work hard until the buzzer of the fourth quarter rings. So back to you, Mika and Ryan. Remember, since the best of three format was implemented, four out of seven times, the winner of game one went all the way to sweep the series. That's a very slight advantage, Miko, in terms of patterns for game one winners. So one-point ball game, Green Archers on top. Santa Maria. Can't find the teammate. He can't find the teammate. And that's a five-second yes. violation. Ball hockey violation. They didn't go over. Another defensive stop by Ateneo. They have a chance to regain the lead with 6 and 58 remaining in the ball game. Bonacher, Alvarez, Cison, Tenorio, and Villanueva. That's the Ateneo 5. Ritualo, Wilson, Manalo, Cardona, and Santa Maria. That's the La Salle 5. Near swipe there by Manalo. Oh, oh offensive foul! Rico Villanueva. That's number two on Rico. But that's going to give La Salle an opportunity. Probably some breathing space. So lost opportunity for that time for Ateneo. Well, Manalo is to sit down. Cortez with four fouls will try to take control of the offensive patterns of De La Salle. So should La Salle hold on to this lead and win today, they shall capture their fourth straight UAAP championship. If Ateneo wins, then we'll all see each other next Thursday for the third and deciding game. As Alvarez taps the ball out, 10 seconds on the shot clock of La Salle. But of course, that's a red play. That's a Pumaran play that we've seen in the 80s to the 90s and even here. You know, that the baseline movement by Ritualo and the pass coming from the wing from the point guard, Mike Cortez. There is no soul that is sitting down inside the big dog. Cortez won't take the three. He drives, and there's a hand check foul on Tenorio. That's number, number four, four on Tenorio. Tenorio. Number four, I don't, I don't think he'll sit down. He has to continue in this game. They were able to come back through the leadership of Tenorio as point guard. Six and 30 remaining, one point lead for the Archers. Two, the bo the both teams are each having two team fouls. Less than seven minutes to go in game two. Cardona against Iguala, that's traveling. But now it's on a share, taking care of uh, Cardona at the top of the key. He's making things difficult for Cardona, making him do that hesitation move. So another stop by Ateneo. One point lead for La Salle. So again, another opportunity for the Ateneans to regain the advantage. And remember, Ateneo led by as many as 11 points back in the first half. And then that big onslaught to start the fourth quarter, giving La Salle the lead. Here's Tenorio with the drive. Oh, bad pass goes to Cardona. Ritualo with an easy two. Yes. 
crucial for an over there. So two blown opportunities already for Ateneo as Eduardo scores his 16th point of the game. Near steal that time. Archer is on top by three. Tenorio inside of Villanueva. Villanueva goes to Season. Season can see sunshine. He shoots and he won't score. Borachar keeps the ball alive. Tenorio three short. Very few shots taken by L.A. Tenorio from the outside compared to game number one where he just had and was able to take the shot from the perimeter. Right. So the archers, again, very methodical. Six on the shot clock. Cortez is blocked by Fonacher. Here's Tenorio. Ateneo fast break in the making. Tenorio to Fonacher inside to Villanueva, and he gets fouled. The will to the last line of defense. Two free throws one more time. Well, the share is giving uh, Tineo uh, the defensive stops here in the fort. That was a smart Z block, the power to live the life you choose, smart Z. Your cell phone now, Green Archers on top by three, 5.09 to go in game two. Three point lead for De La Salle, the two free throws for Rico Villanueva. He's got 17 points to go with his eight rebounds. And two more two block shots for Rico Villanueva. Outstanding numbers again. For the uh, for uh, Ateneo, not much of the use of the bench in the second half. Rico for Coach Jolipa is counting on this group. Probably a seven-man rotation in the second half for Ateneo. So Villanueva now has 19 points, makes it a one-point game. Again, Ateneo is knocking on the door, but with the South Championship composure, the South will not easily and readily and willingly open the door for their arch rivals. Now here's Wilson, a veteran in the truest sense of the word, as Cardona finds his back on the floor. Foul of the ball on Rich Alvarez, number three. So Tenorio has four, Alvarez has three for Ateneo in terms of personal fouls. Four and 55 to go in game two. Lasal leads the series one game to none. And Cardona misses that time offline a bit to the right. Alvarez now with seven rebounds. So again, another opportunity for the Blue Eagles to regain the lead. Tenorio studying his options. Nine on the shot clock. He goes to Villanueva. Villanueva finds Rainier Ciso. No. Bit too strong. Oh! You know, Fonacher is the X factor here for Ateneo in the fourth. Just gave Ateneo a one point lead. First two points for Larry Fonacher. The lead is back with Ateneo. And how would the Green Archers respond? Cortez goes to Cardona. Seven on the shot clock. Cardona. Wow, by uh, Larry Fonacher. So they're not in the penalty. First foul on Larry for this year. Only the fourth team foul against Ateneo. Okay, let's quickly go to Patti Laurel on the Ateneo side. Thanks, guys. During the huddle, Coach Leva spoke to the guys very calmly. He wanted to relieve them of the stress and the tension that they're experiencing right now. And he also told them to continue in executing their play and to stay focused until the end of the game. Right now, to keep an eye on Cardona because he's the most dangerous player right now. And to be quick on their inbound. So back to you, Nico and Randy. Well, right now, Cardona seated on the bench. Uh, we'll make sure to look at him when he returns as Adonis Santa Maria misses. But the long rebound goes to Ritualo. No. Villanueva with a rebound. Well, it's going to be a loose ball foul, and it's going to mean a free throw for Ateneo. Is he okay? <laughs> LA's okay. He's okay. But what a struggle that we're watching, Miko. You know? What a struggle. You know, LaSalle has not executed in its half-court set the last five times five times that they went into their offense. And Ateneo has crawled back from eight points down here in the fort. It was 64-56. You know, LaSalle has only scored two points after, you know, leading Ateneo by eight to begin the fort. And what a ball game so far for Enrico Villanueva as Manny Pangalinan claps on. Villanueva now with 19 points, 9 rebounds, 2 blocks. Make that 20 points for Villanueva with that first free throw.
And he gives that to Dale. A three-point lead with 3 and 42 to go in game two. So who will receive the pass? Will it be Ritualo? Will it be Manalo? Ritualo on the move. It goes to Wilson against Season. Wilson, oh, that's an offensive foul. That's right, partner. You know, LaSalle not patient in their execution. That's number five with Wilson. So he sits down. It's the defense of Ateneo holding out here and saving them. They have a three-point lead, 325. They've never been in this situation, Miko, the first three games, including game one. So Wilson fouls out with seven points and three rebounds in the ball game. He is replaced by Ramos. Oh, Tenorio, a bit too fast for his own good. So that's a turnover against Ateneo. And here's the South with a chance to answer back. Cortez stepping on the gas, finds Red Red. Misses that time. And for the share touch to Villanueva. Quickly to Rainier Season. Season. What's the call? Basket won't count. There is a foul before that pass. On Mali Ramos. And that's number five. Things not looking good for De La Salle. Oh, it's on Santa Maria. Okay, so Ramos is still in the game. However, both Santa Maria and Ramos, each with four personal fouls. A miss there by Ritualo and Larry Fonacher against three green archers. He kept it alive, partner. Villanueva. He kept it alive. He was very wise for Larry Fonacher. He could not get the ball. He tapped it to Rico. Now Rico has two free throws to extend his three-point lead over La Salle. Oh, oh, what a time to miss his free throw. However, Blue Eagles holding on to a three-point lead, 69-66. So Lipa hopes to see his team show the composure that is befitting of what, what many Athenians feel should be a champion team. So four-point lead for Ateneo. The three-time defending champions how will they answer back? How will they respond? A foul on L.A. Tenorio. That's it. That's number five on L.A. Two and 48, a lot of basketball partner. So Tenorio leaves the game with six points. Do we have three throws for Mike Cortez because team foul number five against Ateneo? Yes, I think Cortez is lining up for free throws. Now, Tanchi comes in partner for, for Ateneo. Now, this is a different dimension for Ateneo. Every right. time Tanchi right. replaces L.A. Tenora. Nothing against uh, Paul Tanchi. It's just, you know, the skills and the presence on the floor by L.A. Tenorio is a big difference compared to Tanchi's more deliberate half-court set. On the line is Mike Cortez. He was uh, really impressed uh, observers from the first time he hit the court. For the first time he wore that green and white jersey for De La Salle. He is such a case of composure and calmness, and the game face never changes. This year was given the Sportsmanship Award. So nine points now for the Cool Cat. It's a two-point game. Green Archers down by just two. Time down to less than three minutes to go in game two. This is the UAAP Finals live on Studio 23. Paul Tanchi now has to quarter back the team. He fires high looping shot. That won't go. Rebound by Ritualo. Are the Green Archers beginning to smell blood? We'll see. Here's Cortez. Right over to the middle. And it ties the game. You know, it's taken over the execution of the offense of LaSalle. As Ateneo breaks the LaSalle press, here's the MVP, Rich Alvarez. And we're in the final two minutes, brought to you by Sudan. It's Sudan good. Oh, so offensive offensive foul. foul on Alvarez. You know, composure, composure, Miko. Is the name of the game at this point. The ball game is tied at 70. No L.A. Tenorio for Ateneo. He fouled out moments ago. So here we go. Cortez has engineered this De La Salle comeback in the second half. 
looking for Ritualo, who is being guarded closely by Alvarez. Ramos, top of the key, goes back to Cortez. And Cortez almost lost the ball, recovered by Ren Ren. He misses that time. Rebound by Membrere, who is back in the game. Over to Fonacher. And the Eagles trying to show patience. Season against Cardona. Season fires. Fall oh. away. This a guy for Coach Jolipa here in the fourth. So the lead is with Ateneo with a minute and 13 to go. Cortez leaving. Oh, what a basket by Cool Cat Cortez. He has 13 points. And again, the ball game is tied. A minute and five to go in game two. Lasal can win the title with a with a victory today. Villanueva, he wants a third game against Ramos. Over to Membrere. Yes! Oh! What a three-point shot by Membrere. So a three-point lead for Ateneo with 45 seconds to go. And we shall test the championship experience of the Green Archers. Cortez, very patient. There's the double team by Season. Cardona begging for the ball. Ramos over to Ritualo. Ritualo! No! Oh. And Conachel gets the rebound with 26 seconds to go. 21 seconds to go. Conachel will be fouled by Cardona. Oh, this is a big, big thing for Ateneo. They're looking for the insurance basket here. 18 seconds, three-point lead. Conacher can make it a two-possession ball game. 18 seconds remaining. And they will ice Larry Conacher. They will ice Larry Conacher and make him think about the free throws. With 18.1 seconds to go, Larry Conacher, could, this, could these be the insurance free throws for Ateneo and he misses? <laughs> One more to go. One more to go. Ateneo has a three-point lead. Dick Gordon, Jun Bernardino looking on, hoping their alma mater can pull off the game two win to force a game three. Bonacher, the second year man. Oh, oh. misses both. Misses both. So LaSalle can tie with a three-pointer. 13 seconds to go. 11 seconds to go. Both teams in the penalty. Cortes will drive. And Santa oh. Maria will miss. Last touch on LaSalle. Oh. They've blown an opportunity, 5.2 seconds. Ateneo anticipating a win here. Probably the longest 5.2 seconds here in game number two, Vico for Ateneo. So Alvarez will start the play. Can they get the inbounds? Over to Fonacher. Three seconds to go. They will need to foul. And they're... they're oh, no. The foul call with only six tenths of a second to go. There will be a game three. There will be a game three. Lasal did not, Cortez did not go for the uh, three. He was looking for a quick two when he dished up to Santa Maria. Only ten, six tenths of a second to go. Ateneo on top by three. And Larry Alexander Fonacher is on the line. And he makes the first. That's it for the game. There will be a game three. And Ateneo lives another day. Lasal had its chances, partner. Coach John Lipa, after three losses this year, his players finally win one over the Green Archers. And Ateneo lives to fight another day. 76 to 72. Enrico Villanueva is our Milo Energy player of the game. 22 points, 11 rebounds, one steal, and two blocks. John Lipa and the Blue Eagles, they survive. And we will have a game three. Again, the final score, 76-72 for George Rocha, Patti Laurel, Professor Rani Sakdala, Miko Halili saying good night. We'll see you in game three of the UAAP Finals.